Welcome back folks to Let's Replay Albion, and when last we left off we had a shuttle flight to go on, but let's ignore it and instead talk to Reyna. We have more people to talk to on the Toronto before we get anywhere near close to wanting to go on that flight and progress to the next point in the game. Ah, hello Driscoll, I hope you're feeling fit for our flight. What's your job, Reyna? I'm a physicist and xenobiologist in government service. There's a lot of things to talk about there, like government service. Well, I'm in government service because it offers one of the few possibilities to do practical work out here without being in debt to one of the major companies like DDT. Does that mean Tom's in debt to DDT? That's a good question. Let's ask about DDT. Uh, Domil Dithasu Thompson. I know your company better than you believe, Driscoll. My mother worked there and I spent part of my childhood and youth within the company culture. It's the second largest multinational corporation on Earth. It has more turnover than the gross national product of most countries. DDT arose from a merger of two European corporations and one Japanese company. The corporation is one of the strongest of the large multinationals. It looks like your job's secure, Driscoll. Well, let's talk about uh, HQ. I bet HQ, uh, I bet DDT's central office is going crazy since contact was broken off. Indeed. Let's talk about the flight, shall we? Reyna has a lot of stuff to talk about. I'm eager to experience your flying skills. It is an absolute high for me each time I see a new world, even if it's a sterile world which your company has given the unbelievably poetic name Nugget. Of course, it would be much more interesting to discover a beauty like Joshi used to be. But that would mean this complex would have come all this way for nothing, even if that would make the old environmentalist in me gloat. Let's talk about the environmentalist um, conversation topic, shall we? You know, I was a member of the environmentalists until the radical wing drifted more and more into terrorism. But at least the official part of the organization achieved great successes. The gene technology that supported the resurrection of the tiger last year really improved the public's opinion of the organization. Ever since the greatest messes are being made in outer space, the situation of the last nature reserves has noticeably improved. Keyword there! last nature reserves. Doesn't really say much about how uh, nice Earth looks these days. Let's talk about the complex. It will be fascinating to see how the ship is converted into a factory which builds its own infrastructure. I'm going to talk about myself for some reason here. The amount of automation is simply unimaginable. There will be a metal organism which continues to expand itself and which will send the excess raw materials to Earth. The Toronto is going to turn me schizophrenic. Hofstad, the xenobiologist, complains about the despoiling of a virgin planet, but the physicist Hofstad is fascinated by the technical achievement the ship represents. Indeed, he is talking about himself there. Let's talk about Nugget. The name for our destination planet crudely means what DDT sees in it, a profitable warehouse for raw materials and nothing more. Haven't you, um, haven't you seen the probe data? Let me summarize them briefly. The data shows a small desert planet with a gravity level of 0.8 g due to its heavy core. There is oxygen in the atmosphere, but breathing the open air is probably not possible without assistance. The world's sun is similar to the size of our own, but it radiates a color spectrum shifted somewhat towards the red. The planet has no axial tilt, so there's no significant seasonal variations in temperature. I think we can count on daily temperatures of around 50 degrees Celsius and nighttime temperatures above the freezing point. Oddly enough, a solar revolution lasts almost as long as an Earth year. I think that's all that is known about our destination. We'll know more after our flight. What can you tell me about Joshi, Reyna? Don't remind me. In my opinion, uh, along with the careless behavior on Gaia, Joshi's case is the biggest interstellar space travel scandal. You know at that time, one of DDT's competitors almost completely destroyed a life-filled planet? And you know what else? If it hadn't come out that a living world was ruined and an entire planet exterminated, there would probably still be no control over the matter. If I remember the multinational's comments, they said the planet had poisonous substances in its atmosphere which could not support human life. As if the native flora and fauna didn't represent life! Unbelievably, they also commented about the end of the uh, Grigtra. They called them lop -ears and said that they were subject to the Earth virus because they were decadent and were at the end of their developmental history. It's... Excuse me. I get enraged when I talk about this. Ultimately, this incident is the reason I'm on the ship. Since Joshi, no private spacecraft can go to an unexplored system without a government official. Let's talk about the government here. 
Since the latest high-handed activities of the multinationals have become more known, the pressure on the corporations has ass assumed pleasingly large dimensions. It has almost got to the point where the government deserves its name. Almost. Let's talk about the uh, term you used, floppy ears. That's a racist term, Driscoll. The Greek Tura were a culture with a history more than 200,000 years older than ours. There were only a few thousand of them when the virus from Earth exterminated them. What can you tell me about the Hoika? Gaia is an example of the fact that mankind obviously did not learn from its errors. In the euphoria of the invention, or rather the discovery of Oversea, Gaia just had the misfortune of being a planet capable of supporting human life in the first star system mankind explored. The discovery of native intelligent inhabitants, the Hoika, triggered greater excitement than the discovery of the Oversea. Of course, this did not prevent the settlers from treating the Hoika the same way various nations were treated during the colonial times on Earth. Only now is it becoming clear how exceptional Gaia is, since it is the only world we've found that can permanently support human life. And that is indeed it for all the dialogue choices here. I'll see you later, Reyna. Till then. And not only that, but here is Ned. This is the android body that Ned, the AI of the Toronto, uses to communicate with people. Good day, Mr. Driscoll. Can I help you? Hello, uh, Ned. Do you know about the accident that killed Inspector Beagle? The discharge, which unfortunately led to Mr. Beagle's death, must have occurred during the overseas phase. Unfortunately, I don't know why Mr. Beagle was trying to operate the comm unit at precisely that moment. He did not have any personal relations with other crew members, so no one was able to give me information about his motives. I am sorry I cannot give you more information on this matter, since the death of a government official, even if it was undoubtedly an accident, puts our company in a bad light. Ned, do you have any more precise information about my exploratory flight with Dr. Hofstad? As you can gather from the announcements, everything's ready for the launch. You need only to report to the launching area when you hear an announcement. But what if I ignore them? I may have to order security to drag you forcibly to the shuttle. Would you really do that? No, not really. I just like to hear the little ding-dong of the announcement. Are the landing preparations running according to plan? I'm happy to report that all systems are operating at an error level which is five times below all previous flights of DDT space vehicles. To put it another way, everything's running like clockwork, Mr. Driscoll. I have to go, Ned. Goodbye, Mr. Driscoll. Let's go into here. This is the ship's meeting point and mess room for the crew. Let's, uh, have a talk with you. Have I talked to you yet? Hello, Driscoll. Well, is everything set for the flight? Hello, Robert. What are you doing? I'm a mathem- I am mathematician and navigation officer. Not a mathematician and navigation officer. He is just mathematician and navigation officer. But I thought your name was Robert. What can you say about navigation officer? Fairly hard job this time. Even though, well, maybe because we have Ned the Wonder AI on board. I've tried to find errors on the AI's calculations during the entire flight, but there are none. I think I'm removing the need for my own job by all that checking. No one's prepared to trust an AI 100%, but I think it won't be long before that'll start to change. I don't know. I've checked the calculations for your flight path again. Everything's in the green area. No critical points in the path. Should be child's play. I think everything else is pretty much things we've heard before, so we'll just say, see you soon. Bye. Anyone else we can talk to here that we haven't spoken to yet? There's the captain. There's you. Let's talk to the person behind the counter here. It's Anne. Hello. What would it be for you? A little between meal snack? I have a couple of good chocolate bars to offer. Am I not too sweet? Yes, please. I could always use some. Here, have some. She hands Tom some rations. Marvelous! What can you say about... Ah, nothing yet. What are you doing? I'm responsible for providing the crew with food and other things. Let's have a look at the food option here. The company's supplies aren't exactly for gourmets, but with a bit of intuition I can program the kitchen to make edible food out of it. What can you say about other? If you want to see new videos or something, come see me when I'm in my office. Oh? Videos? The selection is huge. Take a look through my databank when you have a chance. I will. Probably never do that, but ah well. See you later. There's nothing really we want here. We're not going to talk to the captain. We're not going to talk to you again. We're going to go over here, and uh, we've already had a look in there. We haven't had a look in here yet. Announcement for Pilot Driscoll. Please report for a blah 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 flight blah blah. No! We're just going to keep ignoring those because we have things we want to do. 
Or mainly, we- Ah, there's Christine, we might want to have a conversation with her. Special instruments like this can be used for picking mechanical locks. Indeed they can. These lockpicks actually look the same in the game regardless of where you get them from. Let's go and talk to Christine, shall we? We've already had a sort of conversation with her at the beginning, but there are other things that she could say now. So let's have a conversation. Let's wait for her to move a little bit over here. There we go. Now the uh, noises are a little less extreme. Hi, honey. Well, taking a walk before the shuttle takes off? I'm just checking out the systems this giant crate's going to land with. What are you doing exactly, though? I'm checking the landing systems for the fourth time today. What can you say about the dream? You still can't get that crazy dream out of your head? It's so strange that it keeps coming back. Well, since it's not really a nightmare, I hope you can live with it until it stops. It may stop when it's convenient in the plot to do so, but not yet. <laughs> Let's talk about the landing. If everything works, and we assume that it will, we'll be buckled in for about 45 minutes. After that, the landing should be complete and segments of the ship will fold out horizontally. Then there'll be direct gravitational orientation within the segments. Don't forget to stow away the items in your cabin. What can you say about the flight? I envy you and Hofstad. You'll be the first to see, Nugget. I'm crossing my, finger f my fingers for you, Tom. Not just one finger, that's a little difficult. Take care of yourself, okay? Foreshadowing! Now I'm sure we'll be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Also, I... Pretty sure we've had all those conversations before, so we'll see you soon. Bye, big guy. Let's keep exploring, shall we? We'll go over here, we've already got those lockpicks. I think there's another one to get. My old buddy Joe is working up there at the end of the corridor. I should go see him. We'll go see him in a little bit. Not just yet, though. This is the shuttle hangar. Also, there's someone over here. Have I spoke to you yet? Hello, Driscoll. Good luck with your flight. Thanks. Let's go in. Please, 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 Driscoll, come to actually... Just, just walk over to the shuttle that you are going to right now. Please. No! Darn you, Driscoll. And now we're just going to... Uh... Ah, this is someone we haven't spoken to yet. Hello. Hello, Driscoll. This is Robert. What are you doing? I'm a technical director for all segments. What can you tell me about? Segments. Only two of the Toronto's egg segments have life support systems installed. This one here, and the one with the security forces, infirmary, and power plant are located. The rest of the segments only contain mining supplies, which don't need maintenance during the flight, so we're not causing me any trouble. What about ladder? Whenever there's a problem, the technicians come to me and expect me to work wonders. But I can't complain. Up to now, the flight was very smooth. Until now. The Toronto really is worth the money. What about security? The security people aren't that well liked on any ship, especially since the incident on the gate some years ago where the strikers were all shot. Wait, wait, what? They were all shot? Yeah, it was kind of messy. The whole profession's fallen into disrepute. There's nothing more that can be said here, so see you soon. Till then. What we're looking for in here is not the shuttle, which is over here. We could literally just go into this shuttle right now, but we're not going to. What we're going to do is we're going to look over here and uh, find one, here it is, find this. Here is another lockpick, which I think is the maximum amount of lockpicks you can get, which is three. We're not quite yet done here. Also, we could try and talk to you. Hi, sorry Tom, I'm in a bit of a rush. I'm really booked up right now. I'll catch you later. I'm sure you won't, because we're never gonna talk to you again. Let's go over here, shall we, and uh, see what's further beyond. I think I know what it is. This goes to the infirmary and security personnel's accommodation section of the Toronto. Regular crew members have no access. Alright! Driscoll, please! Please! You're delaying everything! Billions of credits are going down the drain! Nope! Look... Uh, I'll call again in five minutes. No, you won't! I'll just ignore it! <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't literally grabbed Tom and just dragged him over to the shuttle. Or worse, I'm surprised they haven't just fired him. Actually, that would be difficult considering they're deep in space. Two security guards stand in front of the entrance to the comm room. This is where the ship's communication units are installed. Hello, how are you? Go on, there's nothing to see here. What happened? You're certainly not standing around here for your health. You must have heard of the inspector's accident with the overseas comm unit. The comm unit is closed until further notice. 
What's your job? I'm a security officer with the rank of Colonel. Well, tell me about the comm room. The room remains closed until the crew the, uh, to the crew until there's no longer any danger from the defective unit. That's enough questions. What about you? There's nothing to see here. Please move along. Alright, fine. For a new ship, by the way, there's a lot of dents in the walls. I suppose not everything can be perfect. The room in which Joe, an old friend of Tom's, is currently working is behind the lower door. Hello, Joe. How are you? Let's have a conversation. Hey, fella. You want to keep me from my work? Good idea. Hi, Joe. Have you seen the security forces in the area? Yes, they're blocking access to the calm room. Arrogant guys. You bet. You know, I've always been curious. I'd like to have a look at the mess in the comm room. Mm, I know we can get by those snoops. I can show you an access to the service deck. You should be able to slip past those security types and get into the comm room. What do you think? Good idea. Let's go. Alright. Look, the wall panels with the green light chains cover the accesses to the service deck. You'll find one of these in the room north of this one. The access code for the deck is 1042. Behind it, you'll find a ladder going down. There you can find a service passage to the calm area. Joe! The last time you looked like that was after that tour through Osaka, just before the launch. Ugh, don't remind me. I was... I'm drowning in work this close to landing. At least our sake marathon in Osaka was worth it. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm simulating a couple of errors so I can check out the backup systems. What can you say about the service deck? Service deck lies under the main deck where we are now. Uh, there is a service access, and it's used primarily by robots, by us technicians, whatever those bolt buckets can handle something. You have to understand, the service deck was set up primarily for robots. There are a number of floor switch plates and similar gadgets which control the locks. Just look around for switches if you get stuck in a place. You'll figure it out. What can you say about reserve systems? Oh, routine stuff, but a lot of it. I'm simulating a lot of improbable accidents, but the ship systems are eating them for breakfast. And that's all we need to say. I'll see you soon. Take care, Tom. He has no items that we can take, I don't think. No, there's nothing we can take. So we're going to head... Driscoll, please! P please come along! We could go bankrupt doing this, just waiting for you. You're going to ignore me, aren't you? Driscoll, I hate you. I hate you, Driscoll. So, we're just going to ignore that voice once again, and head down into here. Enter access code. We need to enter the code 1042, from an option of about a lot of numbers. Went a little bit too far there. There we go, 42. There we go. Correct code. Service panel opening. There we go. The ladder goes down to the service level, which brings about the second part of the game. Tom climbs down to the service level. The first person sections of the game, where we use the uh, mouse here to go in various directions. There's no combat to do in these areas, however, because um, combat will resort, will resort rather, not resort, resort to uh, going to the actual combat screen. When the floor plate in front of the door is stepped on, it lights up. At the same time, the door opens. How very handy. That is the first hint to doing this puzzle here which is that there is a locked door you can't get into, but there are four of these uh, floor plates, which we're going to be uh, stepping on to open up this door. Good plan, I think. Very good plan. <laughs> After this floor plate lights up, the door on the west side of the room opens. Excellent. Marvellous. So we're going to go over here and uh, have a look at this place here. The door here will not actually open with that press there. So what we're going to do instead, is we're going to go over into this corner here, and look at this button. A switch. Well, we'll press it. There we go. But that alone won't do it. There is another one that we need to use, and that is here. Excellent. And that uh, deactivates the uh, actual switch there, which means we can walk through. More importantly, here is something we need to chase pretty quickly, which is this robot. This is a service robot. It's performing an unknown task. And? The door tries to close, but stays open. Apparently, a sensor is detecting a presence in the doorway. That happens to be us. So we're just going to wait in the, um, wait here as well, and uh, there we go. The robot will open it, and we'll get access to this switch here, which we will uh, be using. The noise came from the right. 
Well, we just got to... Oh, this door's still open. Excellent. We'll go through here and into here. And when we come back, folks, we will continue exploring this first-person area. It's running very smoothly, the first-person area, which I'm very happy about. So, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. For maybe we may actually get access to the comm room. And hopefully, they'll have cleaned up Beagle. Hopefully. I hope so, anyway. And I hope there aren't just loads of security guards waiting for Tom, like, Where do you think you're going, Tom? I... Uh, to the brig? To the brig. And then he went to the brig and the game ended. Maybe. Later.